For the first 30 or so years of my riding, I rode a regular bike, a road bike, and I also had a gravel bike. But about five years ago, I had uh, knee surgery. I had my knee replaced. Uh, still continued to ride, but then I had some heart issues. I've had four heart procedures, and my heart rate was getting way too high when I was on hills with the bike. So my cardiologist and I kind of decided that a, uh, an e-bike might not be a bad choice. I have had road bikes with multiple gears on and off for the last 40 or 45 years. You know, as, as we grow older, our, our parts don't work like they used to, but we still like to do the things we used to. And the e-bike enables me to get up in the morning and go bicycling with anybody that is out there bicycling, uh, knowing that I can keep up with him or her. This is my e-bike. It's made by a company called Giant, one of the larger manufacturers in the world. This is a, an e-bike that's the equivalent of a road bike. It has drop handlebars. It's got standard road bike geometry. It's got disc brakes. This has an 11-speed cassette, relatively thin tires. They're 32s. The main battery is in the down tube right here under the word giant. Uh, this bike is referred to as a mid-drive because the motor connects directly to the pedals and chain rings in the middle of the bike. On top of the handlebars is the controller. It allows me to turn the bike on and off and to select different assist levels as I'm riding. It also tells you how much battery is remaining, which is very important. There are five power levels. 99% of the time, I'm in the lowest one. That's more than enough, obviously, for going downhill or on the flats. And it's good for most gradual hills. When I come to some of the steeper hills, the ones that are seven, eight, nine percent grades, very steep, I'll crank it up to the second or third power level. I have experimented with the fourth and fifth, but to be honest with you, what I notice with those is it doesn't help that much, it just drains the battery faster. So it's something you're gonna have to decide on your own, but for me, level one, two, or three is about all I make use of. The most significant thing about the e-bike that reminds me that it's an e-bike is when I come to a turn, particularly a sharp or a hairpin turn, it is quite a bit heavier, twice as heavy as the bikes that I'm used to riding, and the tires are heavier. It, it's just, it's a behemoth. It's like the Queen Mary. Sometimes I have to stop completely to make a turn, but it's, believe me, it's worth the sacrifice. My bike has a built-in battery and also a supplement battery that I can add on. With just the main battery, I probably can go to 60 to 80 miles. If I were to add the second battery on, I'd probably go to 90 or 100. The batteries last longer than I do. Charging the e-bike couldn't be easier. This is the charger that comes with it. One end plugs into a standard AC outlet. The other end plugs into this little port on the side of the bicycle. You simply remove the cover and you jiggle around a little bit until you get at the seat. It turns on the charging, charges until it's done, and then it shuts down. For an average ride in Pittsburgh, your average speed is going to be somewhere between 13 and 17 or 18 miles an hour. The bike has a limitation though. It's a pedal assist, which means that it will not go as an electric bike unless you're pedaling. It does not have a throttle. You can't you know, twist it like a motorcycle and go ahead. The internal limitation, and this is set by law, is 28 miles an hour, but believe me, if you're going 28 miles on a bicycle, well, you're probably pushing it downhill. I occasionally will ride with, with a group on Saturday or Sunday mornings. Many of these folks are half my age. I would never ride with them on a regular bike. I was intimidated by you know, their size, their age, and how fast they can go. With an e-bike, I feel more confident getting out with them. My buddy Dave here will do 35 miles a day, six and seven days a week. I'm happy doing 35 miles a day, three days or four days a week. So having an e-bike allows me to keep up with him, whether he's riding an e-bike or not an e-bike. And the big advantage that I see is keeping up with Jeff, because he's a lot stronger than he pretends to be but keeping up with kids that are 30, 40 years old, uh, it, it's phenomenal. Uh, I honestly don't think at my age I'd be able to keep up with them anywhere near what I would like to be able to do. Don't be afraid to buy a, an e-bicycle. You can do the things that young people can do. 
And I would also suggest that at one point you're going to need a second one. Oh, for yeah. When the first one goes down. You, you always need to have two bikes or N, N plus one. Whatever you've got, you need a new one. Or in my case, have a friend with two. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that, that I would recommend is don't wait to get an e-bike. If you feel that you're falling behind, you're, you're really putting out more energy than you want to when you're on group rides, don't wait. It's like getting a knee replacement. If you need a knee replacement, get it. It'll make a world of difference to the way you feel when you're on your bike and with a knee replacement when you're walking. E-bikes for every level of activity are widely sold in local bike shops. Please be sure to visit these businesses who will help you find the best bike for your needs. Before you know it, you'll have a whole new element of fun added to your day under the electric power of two wheels.